So, I was talking to a gentleman a while back ago, and um, he said that there are two ways that it's always good to start a speech. The first one is you can tell a funny story, and the second one, you can tell a lie. <laughs> well, I don't have a funny story, but I want you to know that I'm very excited to be here today. <laughs> and to give you this portfolio speech and how excited I am to be in Dr. Van Diddy's class this quarter. Well, today I'm going to share with you about what I've learned in this course the humor, and my reaction to my video recordings. There was a journalist named Ross Collin. He was having Sunday dinner with his family, with his grandparents, and he had a little cousin with him who was in high school. So when they were sitting around the table, they were discussing things and that he was going to graduate, the cousin, they had asked him, well, what are you going to do when you get out of high school? And he said, well, I'm going to attend college, go to the military, go travel. But before I can do all of that, I have to, and this is what he said, but before I get to any of that, I have to pass finals and finish my career portfolio. So his uncle asked, well, what is a career portfolio? And he said, well, it's just a binder that you put all kinds of papers in there. and." with writings in it and where you tell about yourself and what you did and so forth. Kind of tell people that you, you want to be this and you want to be that. So I'm going to share with you my portfolio today. And I thought about making a presentation like using a PowerPoint, using Elmo, but I've decided not to do that. I'm just going to stand here and talk to you. And this is a really good opportunity for me because you are new faces. Mm -hmm. I'm from another class and you are new faces. And this will help my skills to know that I can actually stand up in front of new people, new faces, and present a speech or a portfolio speech. So what I've learned this course, well, I've listened to Kim, Ali, Alan, and Kate, mm -hmm. I've listened to their portfolio presentations and they've all presented what they've learned. And it's pretty much what I have learned too. I have learned from Dr. Venditti that I can actually stand up in front of a class and present a speech. I have overcome my fear of just going up to somebody at a grocery store or anywhere in my neighborhood and say, what do you think about Lithuania? And they say, Lithuania? I haven't heard of Lithuania. Is that a, an island or something like that? And then I have to go, well, no, it's not, really, it's not really an island. It's a small country. Or to go to a grocery store and then to ask somebody, what do they think about public speaking? What do you feel about public speaking? So I've learned that I can do that. I can actually go up to someone and ask them a question. The other thing that I've also learned is the importance of expressing yourself, using gestures, using the extras that we have here so that we can express, so that you will know and see, and hopefully to know what I'm trying, what I'm trying to give you, what I'm trying to, to say to you. I've also learned the importance of not procrastinating mm -hmm. because I've learned from the very beginning and from the, the, the thoughts and the suggestions of previous students that they put on Angel um, that it is very portfolio, especially the portfolio presentation that if you procrastinate, that it will not go well. And, that I, and I truly believe that the portfolio presentation is something that should be done daily or weekly so that you can sort your stuff in and put it all together, prepare yourself for when it comes up. And I've also learned to be on top 
of the tasks that were given us, especially our paired speeches, so that we can get together with our partner <coughs> and be able to come together in one thought and in one mind in presenting our own, our own organization of what we have been assigned. We were assigned Lithuania, and I have learned a lot about Lithuania. And that maybe, maybe someday I'll be able to go there. But not, not right now, but maybe someday I'll be able to do that. And then I've also learned that we need to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Practice your speech. I've practiced my speech with my children, my husband in front of the mirror. I've practiced it with Misty, my partner for Lithuania. I've practiced my speech. I've even said it to myself when I'm driving to, uh, in my car, going home or coming to school. I've done all of those things, done all of those things. And there's that uh, saying where it says, practice makes perfect. Well, I don't think practice makes perfect. Practice makes permanent. That if we continue to practice, that it will be instilled in our hearts and in our minds what we have practiced. And then I want to transition over to humor. Humor is something that my family and even our class that we have, they're just like your class, I can see the humor in your class too. How you present yourselves and how you got to know one another and so forth and how you know, you've gotten to know each other so well that you know a little bit of things about one another that are very important to you. And I've gotten to know my class too. And there are things in each individual, individual person that helps me as an individual grow. They have all been examples to me as I have attended class. And one of the humors that I want to share with you, it has to do with my, um, my younger, one of my daughters when she was young, she had just experienced having hiccups. She's never had hiccups before. So she just went up to her dad and said, Daddy, Daddy, do something. My neck is moving, my neck is moving. <laughs> because she can't figure out why she has the hiccups. Mm -hmm. And I have to compare that to myself or to some of us when we do our speeches is that sometimes we get nervous and we kind, we kind of have to think, it's like we're trying to figure out what we're going to do next, what to say, and what to present, and how to do it. And then there's another one where one of my other daughters, she was so upset with her younger sister that she came up to me, she said, Mom, She's getting on my last nervousness. Yeah. It's her last nerve. She's getting on my last nerves, but it's this is her last nervousness. And that's how I feel sometimes. Sometimes I feel so nervous when I'm, when I'm up here saying speeches that I feel like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? If I don't look at my notes, I get nervous. Do I lose track of what I'm supposed to say? But yet, it all works well. It all works out at the end. And then, my video recordings. Oh, how many of you have watched your video recordings? All of them. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, at least some of them. I have, I have watched my video recordings. Now, I get the reaction like Kim, when she watched her first video recording. That was my reaction to my video recording. It was like, oh my gosh, who is that on there? It's, it's like I've grown. I've aged over the screen. You know, it's like I'm thinking, do I really look like that? Do I really, does my hair really look that way? Do I smile that way? Do I dress that way? Do I move my hands all over the place? Why am I walking all over the place? Am I nervous? But that was my reaction to my first video recording. It, it was the first time, it is the first time, it, that I've ever watched myself on a video recording. I've always watched other people speak. I've always watched other people on TV or the internet and so forth, but never myself, never myself on the video. And, it, and by doing that, I have learned that I can become better, which I'm very grateful that Dr. Venditti has had us to record our speeches because it helps us 
to become better. It helps us to improve our ums and oh, I think so and so forth and things like that because I have the tendency to say, to say and so forth and so forth. Instead of completing or sharing, you, sharing with you what I'm supposed to say, I just say and so forth. So I need to quit that one. Don't say so forth all the time. Um, and um, see, I just said um too. And the other thing is that when I look at my recording, I have to decide what is good on my recording and what I can keep. What I can keep. I'm not very good at. Okay.